Hello, I'm Philip Lutz here from London Valves 2022 and I'm delighted to be here with my dear colleagues Siem Latip and Volker Rudolph. And the three of us, we will discuss together some new aspects in the field of transcatheter tricuspid valve therapies. We've seen some um, interesting aspects about the new device iteration of the Pascal system, the uh, precision. And we've seen uh, several new studies, studies um, and new data in the field of tricuspid valve analoplasty, what transcatheter means. We've seen some new data on TIA using the Pascal system and then also obviously replacement. But we're going to start with analoplasty. Volker, you are one of the very few who seem to, to master that procedure and still do to um, a reasonable number of analoplasties. Can you share with us your experience? Well, thank you. I mean, um, I think the patients we are looking for um, when we do this procedure are really patients with uh, atrial tricuspid regurgitation. Um, so we want to avoid tethering of the tricuspid valve, particularly sept leaflet is often restricted, and these are the patients we, we want to avoid. And um, if you take care of these aspects, um, I think we are able to achieve um, results that are comparable actually to edge to edge repair. Um, and this has also been, been shown, as you alluded to, um, uh, in the uh, Tribant one-year data that uh, were presented yesterday here in London, where we see a very robust re reduction of tricuspid regurgitation in 139 patients that were included, 62 patients um, follow-up were, were available, and um, the um, uh, reduction in TR was such that um, we had a percentage of 77.5% of patients uh, exhibiting moderate or less um, tricuspid regurgitation. I mean, you would think that it, it's the most physiological way to deal with the problem, right? Because it's annular dilatation and that's the therapy which really approaches the annulus and tries to make it smaller. Um, on the downside, it, it appears to be a rather complex procedure. What are your procedure times at the moment? So, I mean, the procedure time in Trivent was 147 minutes, which is clearly longer than what we see for edge to edge. Um, if you do more procedures, I think we, you can come down to 120 minutes, but that's it. So it's a longer procedure. But I mean, the, the advantage of it is, as you mentioned, it's more physiologic. And I mean, interestingly, we see an 88% reduction in hospitalization rate in, in, in Trivent. So, so I, you know, I would like to think that because it's, it's so physiological, there's always, uh, there's also a greater benefit, but I, of course I can't prove that in any way. But I mean, the benefit you definitely have if you do this therapy and you, you get a suboptimal sub result, you have further options open. But that being said, this was only done, or re-intervention the tricuspid valve was only done in one patient of the 139 patients that were included. So it's not that you need it all the time, but you have the option. I, I think this is definitely an advantage against edge to edge where, well, you have to live with, with uh, what you got, I think. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you, you still have all the options. Yeah, you know, something you said in one of the presentations struck me when we talked about procedural time and you said, you know, you go six anchors in like 20 minutes and then suddenly the next one you're spending a lot of time on. And so I do think, you know, as we have 4D ice that's more widely available around the world, available in Europe, okay, I think that's going to make the imaging part of this much quicker so that you won't be sitting there wondering, am I in a good yes. place or not? So I think that's going to be important to get the procedural times down and I'm sure there's going to be more device iterations as well. Absolutely. So I seem you, you've always been on the forefront, you've been involved in so many different um, technologies on the tricuspid side and then the latest um, kit on the block, the replacement using the Evoke system. Can you, can you share your, your thoughts with us a little bit please? Yeah. it's. TTVR replacement is, is really exciting. Every time I, I have to talk about it, someone brings it up, I get excited because, um, you know, we've for such a long time, we've struggled with, um, you know, MR and doing mitral valve replacement. And then even when we started doing edge to edge or annual plastic, there were still many patients where there was a lot of residual TR. And so we always hoped that we could do replacement. 
And what's amazed me about the replacement uh, technologies that we involved in, in particular, you know, we involved in Evoke as part of the Tricent 1 and then Tricent 2 study, which is a pivotal study, has been the results we've seen. The procedure times have gotten shorter and shorter. So uh, the last one I did, uh, and I swear, I, I'm, I'm not kidding when I say this, was from device entry to out was 25 minutes, right? Which is, I mean, it felt like I was doing a tavern. It's a game changer, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, but what really is appealing is the fact that you get rid of all the TR. You're not talking about, should I put another device? How much is the residual TR? There is no TR. And so I've been, I've been very excited about that. You're not worried about the outflow track because there's no risk of outflow track obstruction, right? Um, but again, it's early, even though I'm very excited about it and I think it's going to be a, an important part of our future. We need clinical data. We need to do the studies. We need to know what are the long-term issues, if there are any, to really understand how we're going to use this in our patients. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting if you, if you compare to Mitra and uh, how that evolves, um, we, we make much more progress with tricuspid, but as you said, I mean, we, there, there are a couple of things which are different. We don't have the, the, the issue of alpha track obstruction, and that certainly helps. A uh, few comments about the, the, the one-year Tricent data? Well, I think we, that was fantastic. I mean, we, I think we, most of us were in the session um, of the late-breaking trials in tricuspid. That's the fun part about being back here in London, is that you can look at, start, at trials and see the data as it's coming out. I think. A couple of things that blew me away. Number one, there's like 170 patients in that study. Okay. Uh, remember how long it took us to do 100 patients yeah, with TMVR? Yes. Okay. And we've done now 170 patients. I think a couple of things struck me uh, about the clinical data. I think it's, it seems to be very effective. Okay. The reduction in TR is excellent. Patients feel better. The improvement in quality of life and KCCQ is great. Uh, when we look at safety, um, I think also as far as mortality, acute kidney injury, also acceptable. There are areas we need to understand better and I think there were a lot of questions in some of the sessions about you know, bleeding and bleeding complications, how much is related to the fact that these are just sick patients who bleed more versus the fact that they need anticoagulation. Um, I'm not, it's, I don't think it's a usually it's an excess side issue because it's not that much bigger than doing edge to edge, the excess side. So I think those parts we still need to learn a little bit about and, and get better with. Uh, but Tricent 2, which is a, a randomized study, a randomized against medical therapy, I think that's really going to give us an understanding of, how, of what replacement is going to do and how, it's gonna, how, how we can apply it to our patients. Yeah. So by all the excitement about analoplasty and replacement, let's go back to the, to the workhorse of, of today's uh, tricuspid transcatheter procedures, which is still TIA, obviously. We've seen some, some, some new data from registries. What's, what's your take, take there when it comes to, to TIA, tricuspid, Pascal? Well, I think you know, we saw quite a bit of data, both from, it was nice seeing for me as someone who's worked here in, in Europe and in, in the United States. It's always fun seeing you know, the data from both countries because when you look at the data from Europe, you see all these registry data but done by people like the two of you who have a lot of experience and you see really great outcomes. Uh, lots of safety, good, good TR reduction, and even when you only get modest TR reduction, patients feel better. The US data is a little bit different and I think we have to realize that when we look at it, because compared to, you know, in Europe, how many years have you been doing tear on the tricuspid? Six, seven, something like that? You know, in the Europe, many centers started doing it yeah, in the yeah. context of a randomized trial a year ago, right? Two years ago. So you see a little bit of differences in the data between the US and Europe with the US still, I think there's a learning curve that we're getting over. But like you said, I think you said something really important. It's our workhorse device, right? It's safe and it can be implant, it can be used in so many different anatomies. Volker, you've, you've, you've had your hands on the, on the Pascal Precision device. What's, what's the advantage for you? Well, I mean, it's definitely different from the device we had before. Um, and I think the, the advantages you have is, is that it's much more controlled um, uh, and, and predictable. You, you can move exactly where you want to move. Um, it's, uh, I think, more so than the previous version, uh, a single operator procedure, so you, you definitely don't need a second operator. Um, and, um, well, 
I think it also if you if you do things like separate leaflet grasping, um, it gives you more control, um, and, you know, not to lose your rotation and and yeah. and get really the result you 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 plan to have. It's also interesting. I mean, we've discussing all the time about patients who might not be that um, good candidates for the procedure, and then you see this case report. Excellent outcome in clearly red patients where you did some, some pre optimization or where you do sequential leaflet grasping, getting one in first and then swinging over to the other. So it seems that the the complexity certainly increases and we do more crazy stuff and but the outcome sort of is is, is supporting us. I think the thing not to forget is edge to edge is so forgiving. Yeah. Right? Compared to annuloplasty, compared to valves, it's a forgiving procedure. So even when you try and take on these challenging cases, if you can't grab the leaflets, if you can't be successful, you can usually just take the device out and say, I tried it and I stopped, right? Yeah. And I think particularly if you have a device like Pascal that allows you to elongate, I'm, I'm even more comfortable now getting in the commissures, taking on more challenging cases because I'm less concerned about getting stuck. I think that's an important issue too. Absolutely. So you've heard how exciting the field of transcatheter tricuspid valve therapies is. It is evolving rapidly. We look at different approaches like annuloplasty. We have new data for TIA and then obviously also the glimpse into the future when it comes to replacement. Much more things to learn, but the, the future seems to be bright. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.